Hey there, hi there, ho there. We are glad you are here with us at the Godfather Godfather Minute. Minute. I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And together we are the Godfather Godfather Minute Minute Brothers. Brothers. That was a little bit of a tongue twister you let us in with. (laughs) Like, hey now, hi now, hello, hell. There's like a bunch of H's in there. Uh, How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing okay. Just so-so? Okay. Kumsi kumsa. Anything we, anything we can do to make it better? Uh, no, I was gonna say become a Patreon supporter, but I don't want to get in trouble for for promoting that too much. So uh, okay, uh, no, I'm really good. I'm good. We can take that lemonade and throw it in your face and turn it into. Oh no, wait, take the lemons, just throw them at your face, and turn them into lemonade. <laughs> Is that the saying? Yeah, turn lemons, like that. Not, not throwing it in your face, oh, but okay. turning lemons into... <laughs> yeah, this, is, this isn't dodgeball or <laughs> spatial awareness. <laughs> uh, today we're talking about Minute 80. That's right. Minute 80. Welcome to the 80s. 80s. <laughs> and uh, how do I say it? A minuto. A min- oh, it's right. A new, uh, new 10. It is. Now. New new decade. A minuto. Minuto. Numero. Numero. Otanta. 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 That's it. Otanta. That's it. You got it. In minute 80, uh, the boys get a call from the Sonny's man in the police department, mm-hmm. and they learn that Mikey is going to be taken to Louis's restaurant yeah. in the Bronx. Louis's in the Bronx. And then Tessio and Clemenza immediately start making plans on how to get Mikey his gun. That's right. Uh, this this minute starts with a suspenseful shot of Sonny walking slowly back to the phone, mm-hmm. answering mm-hmm. the phone, and then slowly walking back to the table. And yeah. it's like uh, it's it's a well done shot because it's kind of like we're so eager to know mm-hmm. what's going on there. The fact that we're stuck in this static shot at the back of the room while he it's a it's a nice little bit of uh, you know mm-hmm. keeping a keeping a turkey in suspense, as yeah. they say. Yeah, so. That, that would have been a quiet phone. That would have been a more appropriate thing if they had been eating turkey and, and with their Chinese food meal. But I don't typically you don't get mm. turkey with Chinese food. Yeah, yeah, chicken maybe. Keeping a spare rib in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> spare rib. <laughs> um. So Detective Phillips, mm-hmm. do you remember? Do you recall seeing him in an earlier scene, Alex? Is, it, is Detective Phillips his man on the inside? He is. Does he say, does he identify him by name here, or does he just say, my man, in the... I think he just says, my man, but in the book, Puzo writes that oh, it is it is the guy in the precinct. I know, I remember he's the guy who does not want to uh, book Mikey. <laughs> he's a he's war a- hero, Captain. <laughs> Damn it, Phil. So, <laughs> is it Phil? Phil I, it can't be Phil Phillips. Well, maybe that's just his nickname is oh, Phil, because Phil, his yeah. last name is Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Phil Phillips. I said, stand him up and quit telling people when I'm going to be off duty, eh? <laughs> um, he brings up that personal grudge <laughs> yeah. in the middle of him. <laughs> hey, tell me my business. <laughs> he goes through everything. He's like, yeah, I'm, I searched a lot of young punks. and uh, Yeah, I'll try the veal. Sure, Phil. Order me some veal. <laughs> Best in the city. <laughs> um, I wonder if that's so. Yeah, so Sonny reveals that... Uh, Police captains have to be on call 24 hours a day. Yeah. They have to kind of like sign in and explain where they'll be. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's still true in this day and age. I guess I should have looked it up, shouldn't I? Well, I think with cell phones, it's it's probably like yeah, it's if, not, a, if a chief needs to get in touch with a captain, they would just he would just text them. Yeah, it's not like yeah. you have to sign in. Or, yeah, uh, like, oh, well, well, captain or, or uh, sergeant, where's the ledger? We got to find Captain McCloskey. We don't know where he is. Well, yeah. So if there was some emergency that came up, would would they call up the Louis restaurant and say, "Oh, we'll tell Captain McCluskey to get down to the station," yeah, probably. or would they send like a messenger boy or something? Yeah, they just send a Sicilian messenger boy. <laughs> To an Johnny, Italian restaurant. Johnny Ola. <laughs> Johnny Ola. Yeah, you guys got me in enough trouble already. <laughs> You're sending me to Louis in the Bronx. <laughs> I, I don't want to come out of the bathroom with just my dick in my hand. Yeah, so I think yeah, they would contact him in case of an emergency. Yeah. Uh, it was a slick move. 
I'm a part of the Corleones. Yeah, I uh, I'm surprised that they weren't kind of like. Did they know this going in? Was everyone like, oh, we're waiting to hear from Phil? Yeah. Or was it just any of their words on the street? Like, you know, I assume they had multiple tendrils out there trying to get as much information as they could. Yeah, because Hagen in the earlier minute, in the previous minute, says even Salazzo's men don't know where the meeting's going to take place. Even the... Even the man's political contacts would vote for cover. <laughs> so these, these, <laughs> our spies in, in Italia's organization, Salazzo's organization, are taking this personally. <laughs> and we're sustaining all that war. I admire your pictures very much. <laughs> well, Puzo writes in the book, and he answers that question, Alex. What does he say? They are waiting for calls back, but I can't remember whose idea it is. Like, oh, call... Phillips at the precinct. Mm-hmm. And that's when Sonny actually goes and makes the call. Ah, I, I see. I think that's how it went down. Yeah. I'll take your word for yeah, it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's how it goes down. I wish I had a, uh, co- I wish I had a contact on the inside of the uh, police department. That'd be great. It would. What, how would you use that leverage? Um, well, wait, I mean, before, uh, before you answer that question, would you want it to be a friend, someone who's just doing you favors for... I don't know, for friendship, or would you want leverage on them so they're, you just sort of have some negative pressure on them, something against them? I don't like, the thing I don't like about that one is that mm-hmm. it gives the per, that gives him an incentive, or her, an incentive to, to like, have me get shot, or like, mm-hmm. get, get me out of the picture. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, there was a little kill two birds with one stone, I'll get rid of this guy, and I'll get, you yeah, know. Uh, you're right. Yeah. So, uh, no, I would want it to be someone that I was friendly with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they're not going to, you can't get as much from them. Well, like if you have something heavy, some, if you're, what, what is it? Uh, blackmail, ex- blackmail, extortion, uh, blackmail, <laughs> racketeering. You can get a lot more from the person. Whereas if it's a friend, what do you get out of a speeding ticket? Maybe. Well, at most, well, um, I think you can get a lot more out of friendship than that. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, especially if it's a business-related friendship, mm-hmm. like McCluskey, for instance. Yeah, like you know, the Turk. Remember, you're you're telling me the Turk donates money to McCluskey, who gives it to like people in the community mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, so they clearly have a working relationship. Yeah, or or McCluskey, I guess, and the Tatalias. It sounds like the Turk kind of just well, got to town. So. Well, and the Turk paid McCluskey ten thousand dollars for the, the the Simon in particular to have Corleone killed, or right. to remove the policemen from right. The, scene so that so something like that would seem like a better basis for the relationship because the person Mm -hmm. would want to be like well i want to keep helping this guy because he he hooks me up every time Mm -hmm. so uh so two questions or maybe a carrot and stick situation Mm -hmm. you know you put uh yeah yeah so because then you can always say oh this is a cop who got mixed up in the rack to got what was coming to him but i think the internet would love a story (laughs) like that so the two questions first being what would you want your this cop friend to do for you what kinds of favors? Mm-hmm. What's the, was the second question? Yeah, the second question is going to be: What are you going to give this person to main to? What's the reciprocity? Hmm. Well, I'm I'm loath to reveal too many of my plans to the to the general listening audience because this is admissible in a court of law. <laughs> I guess it is, isn't it? Uh, I Probably, guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're putting it out there in public. Yeah. We're not uh, apparently. Federal agents use lyrics mm-hmm. from rap songs and from Mexican narco ballad balladeers. Mm-hmm. They use lyrics from their songs as evidence in court. What is a narco balladeer? I, I don't know if that's the term. It's like you know there are narco uh, like narco traffickers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they hire Mexican musicians in Mexico. This is mm-hmm. all in Mexico to write songs about them and it's a real badge of honor really yeah oh well, see, now that's that's a classy thing yeah that's great i wish i wish american yeah. gangsters did similar things like that and they don't say their names but if you you know if you're an investigator you kind of put it together because the i guess the weakness is the narco trafficker wants people to know that this ballad the song is about them right so they don't name them but they give them enough they put enough information in the Clues. song to connect it to that person because they're pretty much bragging about how awesome they are yeah. and their exploits. Isn't yeah, that awesome? It's kind of ironic that they're paying for someone to promote them, but they, yet they can't say their name in the yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. 
It seems I, like and a, I wonder what the process is like. Do they hear the first draft? Do they give them any guidance? That would be a tough. Well, you're a musician. What yeah. would you do if a uh, if a oh. if a mobster came up to you and was like, hey, Andrew, I want to, I want you to write me a song about absolutely. shooting the Turk. <laughs> yeah, I'd absolutely accept that assignment. Uh-huh. And I think I'd want some guidance. Like, what? Give me some some details. Like, what do you want me to put in there? What don't you want me to put in there? And then give me some creativity, some mm-hmm. wiggle room to come up with the best. Product. Ask. Don't insist. <laughs> yeah. It's my only request. <laughs> You wouldn't be free. You wouldn't be afraid of of, of uh, him so not what, liking it. And so, what are they offering me? Oh, just a favor. Yeah, it's you're, like you're just friendship, be, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's how it starts, right? Would you? Well, well, would you not do it then if if they didn't offer you anything except oh, the, you'd man. have my own dying friendship? Well, maybe someday you could come to me and I can help you out. Oh, that's a slippery. I'd like to say I would do it for the the fun of it, but I don't know. If that's, well, good. Then you're gonna do it, right? Uh, well. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm not very good, you know. Like it goes something like this. <laughs> 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 you got it. You got it. The goes the reason. The pop goes the reason. No, no, no. Look, we already got. We already got the lyrics too. It's pop. It's about pop. <laughs> pop. <laughs> um, pop takes a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Fredo uh, commissions a song. It's all about how his father got shot. <laughs> yeah. Pop takes five bullets, right in his Italian high. Well, I guess you don't even have to be a gangster to do this. I guess any uh-huh. rich famous. I guess if you're rich and famous and not a gangster, you have the added bonus of being able to include your name in the song. Yeah. I actually have thought about the business of just writing songs for people. I just kind of the challenge of uh-huh. hey let me write a song you give me the information and the kind yeah. of the vibe and the feel and i'm going to craft a song mm-hmm. for you i think it's a kind of fun exercise because uh, you do that with drawing right yeah yeah people yeah. will commission a drawing uh it's I not know. as glamorous as i'm making it out to be no it's uh it's it's a good way of uh like in my case people will request stuff that i would never th- have thought to draw on oh. my own you know um, sometimes it's this some it's a mixed bag. Sometimes you get something where you're like, oh, this isn't like fun to draw. It's, you know, yeah. but you're just like, well, I'm just doing it, you know, to, uh, to how many times can you draw Greedo, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um Greedo wearing a Darth Vader mask. <laughs> um hey, do that one for me. Can you do that? <laughs> sure, become a become a gold squadron member. I'll be happy to do it. All right. Um Yeah, I think you should do it. Uh, Paul mm. Simon uh, used to work. There used to be a, a company where you could send in lyrics, like words, poetry. You send in mm. your poem, and they would put the poem to music. And oh, that's how fun. Paul Simon used to do that for oh. like as a professional thing. Cool. So that's a similar. Well, if thing. any, let's get it. Let me get it started now. If any of our listeners out there want to negotiate with me, send a negotiator in. <laughs> Hit me up at Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse Nightclub. Yeah, we'll, then we'll talk. So if, if Don Corleone said, "Hey, uh, funny, hey, funny paper, funny paper guy, I want mm-hmm. you to draw, I want you to draw a picture of a, uh, of uh, my, of my middle son Fredo, uh, doing good stuff, being smart, <laughs> doing a good job." Uh, <laughs> would you charge him? Would you a Would you do it? And b Would you charge him for it? No, I would do it. I would not charge oh, him for okay. it. What would you show Fredo doing? Well, he'd have a big giant head and his body would be all small <laughs> and he'd be uh, riding on a skateboard. <laughs> would he be in that chair? <laughs> yeah, he'd be laying down in the chair. <laughs> what would he be doing? Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess, if, if, I guess I would either have him drinking a banana daquiri oh. or I'd be having I'd have him banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. Oh, and Mo Green in the yeah. back with his or hands Mo over Green his head. slapping him. <laughs> While wow, he's banging two. Wait, yeah. This? Combine uh, every Fredo uh, detail <laughs> yeah. to one picture. Mo Green is lying face forward, getting a massage and slapping Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's All right, let's funny. do it. Let's do yeah, it. Okay. That's our next shirt. Awesome. So one difference between the book and the movie. Alex, in the movie, where is the meetup going to be? In the movie, the the meetup is going to be at uh, Louis's restaurant. That's in right. In the book, you want to take a guess where the meeting is going to be? Queens. <laughs> They're going to say Louis's restaurant because it's a trick question. <laughs> no, it is the Bronx, but it's Lu- Luna Azure. Luna Azure. Luna Azure. I don't know why they changed the name of the restaurant. Hmm, maybe it was, that means blue moon. 
was it another was it maybe a real restaurant that they had to uh ah. they had to not yeah too many people were going in there with guns <laughs> or taping guns behind the toilet <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if uh clemenza goes to tape the gun and there's like four guns already <laughs> yes. a knife like a <laughs> brass knuckles like he's got all those options <laughs> Um, that way, if you were the owner of that restaurant, would you keep it and try to capitalize on you having the restaurant that, that where where uh, Solazzo and McCluskey were killed? I don't know. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to serve the best meal in the city. <laughs> the picture of uh, <laughs> a quote under a picture of uh, McCluskey <laughs> holding his throat. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I you, ate in a restaurant in uh, Manhattan where gangsters were gunned down. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like a steak place in the, I forget what it was called, Sparks maybe? Hmm. And in the 80s, some mob guy was gunned oh, down wow. while he was you know, coming out of the restaurant. Was that what uh, uh, the, the Teflon Don, when he rose to power? That was a very famous one. Oh, yeah. It was some, I, I'm not as familiar with my okay. 80s, 80s uh, gangsters. All but, right. Uh, huh. But uh, I guess it's a it's a it's a mixed bag, yeah. Because you could people would be going to it, but yet you'd have this kind of tarnish. Like what? Well, you don't want you don't want necessarily you don't want the taxpayers to stay away because they're worried they're going to get shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if if I guess if it happens more than once, especially yeah. <laughs> and if it happened the longer ago it happened, the the cooler it is. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, if you're like, oh, Al Capone killed a guy here, you'd be like, oh, yeah. wow, that's cool. You yeah, know, as definitely. opposed to like, oh, last week someone was murdered I here. <laughs> I would really ham it up. I would put the chalk line. Actually, I would leave like, like, there, like the blood on the floor. You put extra blood on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would dummy like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't reset that table because remember yeah. uh, McCluskey or someone slams into it and it goes upright. Right. So you'd keep I it. I would keep that with all the stuff on the floor. <laughs> You feel like ropes around it so no one, no one interferes with it. Yeah, definitely keep the original toilet. You know what I would do? Every night, every hour on the hour, I would have I would have them recreate like actors. Oh, yeah. It's you like know? Johnny Rockets where they come out and sing. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> or every um, time the subway comes by. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. How, um, which role would you want to play in the recreation? <laughs> hmm. I guess ideally you could rotate it so we, yeah. everyone gets to do all the different parts. Yeah. But, uh, oh, they're all pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you only do the shooting part, right? No, I think you do the whole thing. They come in, they, or you'd have to have the actors come from Long Beach in the car, get <laughs> me to <laughs> Jack Dempsey. Make it really authentic. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd want to be McCluskey in that yeah. uh, situation. Because <laughs> you, at least you get to eat some of your dinner before yeah. you get killed. <laughs> <laughs> and plus he gets, uh, does the turk get shot twice? We'll figure. How, how much longer until the turk gets shot? Ten minutes, Alex. Boy, he got whacked. But we still got the turk. And this Captain McCluskey. Huh, he's a stupid jerk. They're going to kill Pop. So the bank accounts can feel. Relax, it's business not personal. Business not personal. We need a plan and Tessio's our man. All my arrangements, all my, all my arrangements. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Have a seat, then order your meal. Drink some wine, try the feel. The best person. Ask for permission, then go to the can. When you come back, You'll have more than your dick in your hand Two shot each you'll be on the next flight to Sicily It's perfect for us, they got an old fish in the toilet Shoot the Turk and McCluskey too How many days until you do? We're counting down, come count with me You ain't gonna miss the Turk or Paulie I know I'm the one We count down In this song Michael and Enzo Can't protect me very long Pull your fire Shoot the Turk Yeah, you'll break some laws Put in the morning You won't have to show pause We count down So lots of life Beat the gun Don't upset 
for the mental's wife. The cannoli. We'll count down. So take your pick. It's no more salatsu or no more salatsu tricks. I'm not that funny. We'll count down. Count with me. No more salatsu. No more madras. Why you little punk? Shoot the turk. Shoot the turk. Yeah, that's it. Ten more minutes. All right. I can't wait to hear what the the supporters vote on. It sounds like uh, Sonny getting shot on the causeway yeah. is the leading one. And what was your thing you were gonna do? A uh, a. Uh, I was thinking about like a Dixieland all uh-huh. brass band. Yeah. Yeah. I think since he does that dance, you should make it be like a dance number. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah. Since he, since he, and then you can sync it up to the music. Oh, and, have and I can uh, keep it like I can keep reversing and yeah, moving yeah. forward the footage. So he's like doing a dance. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Do the causeway. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Is it easy enough to pull stuff from YouTube? So I could cut up the film and and create a video for this song. That'd be really funny. I'm sure there's ways to do the uh, causeway. I think it'd be do sunny. Do, do the, the sunny, sunny, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well another the, the, there's a line in this minute that we you and I quote all the time. Really? Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny because before we started doing this podcast, I never gave that line a second thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I don't know why we landed on that line. Um, well, one thing I think is funny about it is that, uh, so Tessio immediately is like, oh, it's perfect. It's a family place. Everyone minds their own business. Good mm. food. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> I like how he says good food. Like that's one of the, and it's like the third thing he mentions too. <laughs> yeah, so it it's, is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay away from the veal though. Yeah. <laughs> Let my crusty and salazzo off an order the veal. <laughs> now, listen, Mikey, when you get there, they're going to try to get you to order the veal. Yeah. Don't do it. It's don't, overpriced. It's not good. Don't fall for that trick. It's an old Sicilian <laughs> message. I mean, shoot that guy first. <laughs> um, Barney, don't order the veal, Barney. <laughs> I like also that Tessio calls uh, Clemenza Pete. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a f- and I, I think that's one of the few times where he's referred to that way. <laughs> Everyone else just calls him Clemenza. That's all the true. Time, yeah. Right? So yeah. Um, I just realized why McCluskey does not want him to order the veal. Why? Because he wants him to order the fish. Oh, uh, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> So, uh, do you remember what uh, Tessio's first name is? Sally. Sally. Salvatore, probably. Yeah, Salvatore. Tessio. Salvatore and Peter. Mm. So, interesting difference between the book and the Alex. You know, you know that the book is different from the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different. The book is different. The book is different than the movie. Yeah. One difference. I know. You have to remind me. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Listeners, this podcaster is taking this very personally. <laughs> One difference is in the movie, Tessio says it's perfect and the food is good. Yeah, he sort of confirms that. Mm-hmm. And then they talk about taping the gun up. And then it's Clemenza who starts giving Mikey instructions. Okay, you're going to shoot him to. So this minute ends with Clemenza starting yeah. to give instructions yeah. about how to actually do the killing, where mm-hmm. to walk, and yeah. all that. Look him in the eye, all that stuff. Or don't look anyone in the eye. Uh, but in the book, it's Tessio who gives all those instructions. Huh. And even goes as far as when they when they are talking about this place and the venue, how good it is, Tessio takes a bunch of stubbed out cigarettes mm-hmm. in an ashtray and he draws a little map of the interior of the restaurant right there on the desk. Wow. And they start talking about how Mikey will come out from the bathroom and shoot him this way and wow. walk this way. I didn't know you could so do cigarette Tessio. butts Tessio's as a, the, a cigarette butts as a <laughs> writing implement. Oh, he wasn't writing him. He was he was making a map like putting butts together as walls. Oh, like using them yeah. as okay, I see. Building like a house out of yeah. know, <laughs> cigarette butts. House of butts. <laughs> Tessio's house of butts. Oh, yeah. A lot of butts. 
<laughs> we have an affidavit here saying you laundered money through Tessio's house of butts. It's right here. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> at one point you were... They got me working at a Mickey Mouse nightclub in a Tesco's house of butts. <laughs> that was smart. <laughs> um, so, uh, you totally threw me off. Sorry, Tesco's house of butts. Tesco's house of butts. Oh, yeah. So at one point you had a theory mm-hmm. that, even that this early in the movie, Tesco is is trying to be talked to Barzini. Woo! <laughs> Do you, yeah. do you believe Wait, Barzini, that? You mean uh, Tatalia? No, Tatalia's a pimp. <laughs> so do you still believe that at this point? Well, as I was researching this minute, I was wondering. I mean, he seems to set up the assassination attempt very well. He tapes the gun. Clearly, Solozzo and Milkowski don't know about it. Mm-hmm. Although maybe he was, maybe he was taking the lead on setting it up so that knowing that he had the option to flip and tip off Solozzo. So I don't know. I love the idea that he's a traitor from the start <laughs> and that they all throughout the movie, Tessio is trying to come up with the ways to kill him, but they always, <laughs> they always never, they like, they always fall through somehow. Yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, like a crashed car we saw outside. Oh, the, that's, yeah. That was someone <laughs> yeah. trying to kill Mikey. And, and that's why Tessio is all disappointed when, when he says, we hit Bruno Tatali at 4 a.m. He's actually not very happy about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think you're right. And that's why when finally they come up with this great plan, he's like, it's perfect. <laughs> like, and then yeah. in parentheses, what he doesn't say is, oh, I can tell McCluskey and Solozzo about it and they can remove the gun, et cetera. Uh, I didn't say that part out loud, did I? <laughs> yeah. That's also why he mentions the food because he's thinking... Oh, it's good food, great veal. McCluskey will will thank me for yeah. bringing because oh, he'll actually get to eat his meal. <laughs> <laughs> Even the veal backfires, Alex. <laughs> so, like, as soon as they leave, he immediately tries to call them up and say, "There's a gun <laughs> hidden behind the toilet," but then but something happens that he can't get through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Connie's on the phone the whole time, and like Desi was like, "Come on, come on!" Like trying to indicate that he, <laughs> yeah, used, he has right. to use the phone. Connie's <laughs> like, "Carlo, I miss you. I made dinner for you, Johnny." <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, there was one other jo- uh, cleanup item I forgot to talk about in last minute's bonus content. Do you want to clean it up? Oh, let me clean it up right now. Okay, this clean is like give people a taste of what they missed in last week's yeah, bonus clean content. It up. Mm-hmm. When Don Corleone was shot. Uh, John and Johnny found out about it. His first, well, he was he was concerned, of course, that his godfather might die. But his one of his first thoughts was, "Oh my gosh, do I still have the part in this picture?" <laughs> right. And then Hagen sent him a message saying, "No, you're st- you still have the part, uh, but it is just one movie at a time." Wait, did he ask Tom? Do I still yeah, have the I think he, oh, okay. I think he reached out to Tom. I thought Tom just said, "Well, Johnny's probably going to be nervous. He doesn't <laughs> no. have the part anymore. He's taking yeah. it very personal." I mean, it's funny. It's funny because Hagen and and Johnny are not very close. Mm-hmm. They sort of have some contempt for each other, mm-hmm. and so that would have been a good opportunity for Hagen to take advantage of the situation. Totally screw with Johnny. He's like, "Sorry, man, movie fell through. Don's <laughs> all laid up. Don't know. You're gonna have to go talk to Waltz yourself." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the last scene would be. <laughs> The last scene would be uh, Johnny's all de- Johnny's all dejected. He goes to the movies because he wants to see the movie, just like to torture himself. Yeah. And Tom Hagen is oh! the part that he <laughs> he looks at like the camera and like none. <laughs> he winks. He knows that <laughs> that Johnny's going to be seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be great if Hagen said, "Oh, Johnny, you got to go see Waltz yourself. He's expecting you. You got to try to convince him." And it's the same exact scene. Mm-hmm plays out but instead of Hagen getting getting berated yeah. by Waltz it's Johnny sitting there he's like mm-hmm. no you don't understand Johnny Waltz international pictures you can never get that far and I'll tell you why it's the same exact spiel yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the cleanup item Clean all right up. cleaned up we cleaned it we, we cleaned, cleaned it. it up we cleaned it up mm-hmm. Uh, do you have anything else for minute number 80? I do. One one last point. Hagen asks, in the book, Honey, Hagen asks Sonny. Honey. <laughs> Hagen sacks honey. <laughs> Extra, <laughs> Hagen sacks honey. It's all misprinted. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexic news point. <laughs> yeah, they have to retract it. 
<laughs> yeah, they got they clearly have some pretty quality guys on the payroll, right? On the newspaper payroll. Yeah. <laughs> they can get it all wrong. <laughs> Hagen asks Sonny if he should drive, be the one to drive Mikey to the restaurant. Uh huh. And what do you think Sonny says, Alex? No. Why not? Because it's business, not personal. <laughs> Do you think that's Hagen's license plate, by the way? <laughs> Wait, what would it be like? It's like B-Z-N-S-N-O-T-P-R-S-N-L. <laughs> <laughs> or like biz, yeah, B-I-Z-N-O-T-P-I-R-S. That's too many letters, probably, but you get the idea. <laughs> oh, that's what we can talk about in the bonus content. What? Godfather license, license plate. Those are the bumper stickers. Those too. Okay. Anything yeah. with car related. Yeah, stuff. Anything car okay. related. And yeah. what kind of cars they would drive yeah. if they were alive today, maybe. Yeah. So if you want so, to hear that, go to uh, godfatherminute.com slash support and uh, well, you can get more of us talking about jibber jabber mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. You had something else you were going to say? Yes. So what does Hagen, what does Sonny say? It's business, not personal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Sonny says, no, 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 Tom, I need you here because when this thing goes down, you, I need you to get to work to make all the plans for Mikey. You need to do your lawyer stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Sonny asks Hagen, says, now do you have all the newspaper guys lined up? <laughs> That's what he asks. And I love how they're already talking about like, making sure the stories are ready to print, which is actually interesting. Do they, I guess they haven't tipped off anyone. They don't talk about this in the book, but does anyone in the newspaper know this is going to happen? No way, right? No, I can't imagine. They I guess would. they just have the information ready to go to the newspapers. Well, right? I think uh, they have to bring the newspapers guy and guys in pretty quickly after it takes place. I don't think necessarily. No, I think it can be the kind of thing where they. Uh, where there's the shooting happens, everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Oh my gosh, what happened? What's going on?" And then, like in the coming days, like Hagen would go to a reporter and be like, "Hey, listen, if you if you're looking for a good angle on that McCluskey thing, you should look into uh, him getting mixed up with the rackets." And then, you don't like, think they would have to instantly get to the guy, the extra extra kid, and publisher, and say, "Whoa, you got to spin it this way because you're on our payroll," right? Uh, hmm. We need to find a newspaper man. A newspaper man? An old editor. I don't think they make them anymore. <laughs> Got the eye shade and the yeah. <laughs> sleeves rolled up with the garter on it. Um, running a Gutenberg press. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I don't think it's instantaneous, but I think you're right. It's probably... They probably... Uh, Mm-hmm. I think we're probably like the next day that someone goes, hey, uh, hey, our reporter, how you doing over there? Oh, you get the McCluskey mm-hmm. story and then be like, oh, you know, you should look into his background because I think you, you might be mixed up in the rackets. And the yeah. guy's like, oh, thanks, Tom. You're right, Tom. He got what's coming to him. Yeah, I'll send you a box of cigars for Christmas. You know, that <laughs> kind of thing. Because that, there you go. That's a mutually beneficial relationship because uh, they, they get the scoop. Yeah. And then they also get the, the Corleones get protection, you know, get some yeah. spin. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh yeah, that makes your sense. Father. <laughs> do you do you think it's Hagen who personally makes those calls to the newspapers? Probably. Mm-hmm. He might. <laughs> <laughs> what do you rate this minute? I'm going to rate it. Uh, oh, wait. We got to say it at the same time, right? Yeah. Let me think about it for a sec. All right. I got it. So on three. Ready? Mm-hmm. One, One, two, two three. three. It's perfect. Perfect. Well, actually, yeah. I should have said five. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tessio is definitely the star. He's the he's the uh, he steals the show in this minute. Yeah, he steals the minute mm-hmm. with his with his uh, review of Louis of Louis's restaurant. It's great that he remembers the toilet as a chain. Yeah, I guess that would be memorable. Well, you think back then less so because there probably would have been more of them. Oh, you think so? Or are we or have we blurred the past so much that chain toilets are really from 1910 or something? I guess so. But even then, you'd think there would still be more than there are today. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, because Fish does say they got an old fashioned yeah. toilet. Yeah, I was like, dude, you are old fashioned. You don't even realize <laughs> yeah. if it's old fashioned for you, then <laughs> it's like ancient. Was it like ancient Egyptian uh, toilet? <laughs> yeah. I just think it'd be funny to leave a Yelp review for a restaurant, but use Tessio's lines. It's perfect. Oh, Eric Hughes yeah. lines, their own business, the good food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, we'll convene to talk about Godfather uh, license plates, bumper, bumper stickers, stickers, and other car air yeah. fresheners. 
<laughs> yeah. And um, customized horns. Actually, oh, it's funny because yeah. isn't that the Godfather theme? Didn't, didn't we establish that it's the second most used like uh, novelty horn? We did talk about that. Yeah. But what sound is it? Is it the theme song? Yeah. The, uh, the actual. The, da, na, 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 na. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to scrub that out. <laughs> <laughs> you can do three notes. Sick, it's before, copyright yeah. attorneys on me. Um, you could use our opening theme as the. Uh, oh as the, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I should make that a ringtone. <laughs> okay, That's so uh, well, we'll be back with another episode next week. But until mm-hmm. then, try, try the, the veal. veal. It's the, the best, best in the city. city.